Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining the Q1 Thermal Public Forum. Uh, my name is Ron Renham, Program Manager here at pg e Also on the call is Mike Landa, who's Program Manager for SoCal Gas, and Brian Jones, who's Program Manager for Centers for Sustainable Energy. Um, Center for Sustainable Energy, or CSC, is the Program Administrator on behalf of sdg e uh, The agenda today, um, we're going to have a bit of the um, updates for Thermal, um, go over the program status, um, go a little bit over the San Joaquin Valley um, disadvantaged um, community pilot decision. Uh, it was uh, came out recently in back um, late 2018. And then we're gonna go over the proposed um, program sunset um, timeline. And then lastly, we'll have a bit of Q&A, uh, but if you have any questions, you can start entering them now. Um, so to go over this, the program status, um, we just recently had a um, approved handbook um, back in December of 2018, so the version of the handbook, um, and that handbook changed. Um, commercial pools are now at $7 a therm for step one applications. Also, um, industrial cap was raised for PG&E and, and SoCal Gas, and it was eliminated for CSC. Um, the ITRON is our measurement and um, evaluator. Um, they'll be going. They're going to be starting the cost effectiveness study on natural gas backup. Also, um, they are also doing the impact evaluation for thermal, um, and that should be wrapping up this year. Um, to go over a little bit of the program progress, um, we have SoCal Gas. Um, they're just blowing everybody out of the water. Um, they've done around almost $80 million in incentives since the start of the program. Um, we have PG&E in second place, um, about a little bit more than $30 million in incentives. And then CSC, a um, little bit more than $10 million in incentives. And this is all for the all program budget or all budget uh, for the program. We're going to be, um, for the remaining budget, I'm not going to go over too much about this, but um, Still a lot of funds for a thermal. Um, SoCal Gas still has funds left, um, but they'll probably be going um, pretty quickly as we get to the end of the program, um, as they have uh, a lot of application. Um, lastly, we have um, last slide, um, slide seven. It's just um, thermal resources where you can go and get more information about thermal. Um, you can go to gosolarcalifornia.ca.gov. Um, you can get the handbook there. Um, also, some information regarding thermal. CSIthermostats.org. You can get um, information about each um, program administrator. You can get um, how many incentives. You can get um, therms saved. Um, and um, yeah, that's about it. Um, next slide. Uh, Mike Landa will be going over to San Joaquin Valley um, DAC pilot. So uh, on December 19th, uh, the PUC issued and approved the San Joaquin Valley uh, Disadvantaged Community uh, Pilot uh, Projects. And uh, it essentially directed PG&E and SoCal Gas to file an advice letter to modify the program, the CSI Thermal Program, uh, to fully subsidize uh, solar hot water heating systems for eligible uh, participants. Uh, within 60 days, SoCal Gas and PG&E did file an advice letter on February 8th. And uh, in the advice letter, uh, <clears throat> essentially what we did is uh, we allocated, both so uh, SoCal Gas and PG&E allocated a specific amount of money funds set aside for this DAC pilot project. Uh, the project uh, toward the end of this year will be managed uh, by uh, program implementers, uh, program uh, administrators uh, that will be uh, chosen based on a bid process. So essentially uh, one contractor will be managing the, the efforts either for SoCal Gas uh, and another one for PG&E. 
Uh, SoCal Gas set aside $1.375 million and PG&E set aside uh, $4,652,000. And uh, this should cover a specific amount of homes. We put the cap at about $8,500 a home. Uh, the reason we did that is that uh, we realized that the average cost of an installation in the San Joaquin Valley was about $6,600 with a max of $8,500. So we capped it at $8,500, not to exceed that. We're hoping uh, that'll come down further than that. Uh, for SoCal Gas, hopefully it'll cover about 150 to 200 homes, both in our service territory and in joint uh, uh, territories with uh, PG&E and uh, SCE possibly. Uh, the single family program, because this will be, this will occur toward the latter part of this year and into next year, the program is supposed to sunset July of 2020. So in order to, uh, to be assured that it be sufficient funds, we have modified the single family program for this specific pilot project to allow for a two-step reservation process. So essentially the contractors, once they're chosen and choose the homes, they will be able to file a reservation to hold the funds for those uh, specific homes. And that way they will have uh, sufficient time to, uh, to install the system. That's essentially it. For PG&E, hopefully it'll cover about 550 to 700 homes in their service territory. Uh, that's essentially the the DAC program in the San Joaquin Valley. If you, anybody else has any other questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask them at the end. All right, thanks, Mike. Um, moving on to our next agenda item. Um, so one thing that we've received questions about repeatedly has been um, the timeline for the close of the program. Um, so as we all know, AB 797 extended the program by two years. Um, and we've gotten questions about, okay, what's the last day to actually apply? How long will my reservation period be if I get a reservation of funds in right near the deadline? Um, so we wanted to provide a little clarity on that, where our thinking is. Um, and one thing that we realized is that this is not clearly spelled out in the program handbook. And we've kind of been relying on language and decisions to date. Um, so uh, we do want to get that included in the handbook so that everyone has a clear understanding of the timelines we're working around. Um, and just to provide a little of the context and how we're approaching this, so um, the original program timeline was set out in CPUC Decision 101022, and that directed the program administrators to accept new applications through December 31st, 2017. That was based on language in the original enabling legislation, AB 1470, um, that said the goal of the program was to install 200,000 solar thermal systems through 2017. Um, so CPUC interpreted that language as meaning the program should remain open through the end of 2017. Now, the program was extended by Assembly Bill 797, um, with, which included language that says uh, it would extend operation of the program through July 31st, 2020. Um, AB 797 does not include any sort of analogous language to AB 1470 about installing a certain number of systems through a certain date. Um, so really the direction that we have right now from the legislation is to extend operation of the program through July 31st, 2020. Um, the program administrators in, in looking at this interpret that um, as meaning that we should keep the program open to accept new applications through July 31st, 2020. And when we say new applications, we're referring to um, incentive claim form submission for one-step project, single family, um, and um, reservation request form submission for two-step projects. Uh, so another consideration that we have is that we will require adequate time in a sort of program sunset period to process the existing reservations, issue PBI payments for any of us that have active PBI projects, um, and so those different phases can take a significant amount of time. So if you were to receive an 18-month reservation on, let's say, the last day that you were allowed to submit reservations, um, you'll need 18 months, potentially with a six-month extension, and then potentially with another two years of PBI payments on the end of that. So we need to carve out an adequate sunset period that allows us time to administer those projects and give them um, enough time to 
uh, install the project, claim the incentive, and go through the PBI payment process. Um, so we're going to be submitting an advice letter to CPUC in the near future to clarify these dates. Um, we've also analyzed our administrative budgets, and because we expect program activity to tail off significantly through that sunset period, we are confident that we'll be able to administer a sunset period under our existing um, admin budgets. Um, so we don't expect to require any additional funds. We don't expect to have to dip into any incentive budgets to administer that sunset period adequately. Um, so we're going to be preparing this advice letter and submitting it in the coming months. Um, but we did want to stress that this is still just a proposed timeline. This is just to kind of lay out what the program administrators are thinking and our approach to it. Um, nothing is official until it's been approved by the CPUC. Um, and so we will be working under the status quo assumption that um, the program will accept new applications through December 31st, 2019. And that is what the date that we've been communicating throughout since the extension of the program. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, that advice letter should be coming out in the near future, and um, hopefully we'll get approval from the CPUC, and that'll give us uh, an additional seven months to get new uh, projects in, new applications in. So we wanted to give you guys an update on that, <clears throat> and I think that brings us to our questions portion. So if anyone has questions, especially specific to the San Joaquin Valley, uh, DAC pilots, or the uh, program sunset timeline, feel free to type them into the questions box in the GoToWebinar menu. Um, we have a couple coming through here. I'll try to kind of direct traffic to the other PAs as appropriate. Um, <clears throat> first question, is there a request to switch some money from PG&E to SoCal Gas, looking especially in low income, comparing 18 million versus 5 million. Um, so I can handle that in PG&E, SoCal Gas. Feel free to follow up if you have anything to add. But as far as I'm aware, there's not been any conversation about actually moving funds between program administrators or service territories. Um, that would probably that would require a pretty significant uh, modification to the program. Um, changing those budget allocations between service territories and between uh, ratepayers. So I don't know that that has been considered or would be on the horizon. Um, pg and &E, SoCal Gas, do you have anything to, to add to that? The idea of shifting potentially unused pg and &E funds to SoCal Gas? I, I, that would be a decision. That would be a, 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 a PUC uh, decision. I, I just don't see that based on previous decisions that that would be allowed. Yeah, I also don't see it, um, that happening as, you know, our customers have paid into the program. Um, so I don't think there is a way to shift those funds or if there's a mechanism, you know, for SoCal Gas to take those um, funds that our customers have paid into the program. Yeah, I'm not sure we've seen a precedent for that in any other programs. Um, what's much more likely would be shifting funds between a PA's um, existing budgets if one of them is not being utilized or sitting unused, potentially moving that into a more active budget category. Um, you know, that also requires CPC approval. But um, moving on to the next question, um, multi-part question, and this is about San Joaquin Valley. Um, so will any will any CSI thermal qualified contractor be allowed to participate in the San Joaquin program? Is there a fee for the reservation? How are the rebates calculated? Is there a list of the 12 communities that qualify for the program? Do both propane and natural gas heaters? I think the question might have got cut off there. But um, multi-parts, so do either Mike or Ron want to take that one? Yeah, I, I, I can address that. Uh... Uh, there's no fee for the reservations, just like multifamily. So it's uh, there's no fee for that. And because we're going to be choosing a a program implementer or some one contractor to manage this program, both uh, you know PG&E and Soki got to be going that way. 
they will decide whether they want to uh, choose uh, one eligible solar contractor or multiple solar contractors to do the installation. So that's to be determined. Uh, again, that's going to be by, uh, by the program implementer. And uh, yeah, it covers natural gas customers. The list of cities are there for SoCal gas. It's mostly California City. There's a few shared communities with PG&E and potentially some also with Edison. Mike, are those communities laid out in the decision? Is there is there a place that we can point people to see a list of those? I of think they're in the decision. That they do list some of the communities. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mike. Um, we had a follow-up question um, about contractors who will be allowed to install under the uh, San Joaquin Valley DAC program. I think that was just answered by Mike, so um, hopefully that answer addressed this question as well. Um, we have a question about where do we see fund maps? Um, so if this is referring to a, a sort of visualization of where funds are available, um, we don't have that tool currently. Um, you can go back to one of the earlier slides that directed you to CSI Thermal Resources. Um, you can get to the remaining budgets pages from there um, that will uh, show you program administrators remaining budgets and then it's just based on their service territory, PG&E, SoCal Gas, and then um, CSC administers for San Diego Gas and Electric Territory. Um, Follow-up question on um, areas of eligibility for the San Joaquin Valley DAC pilot. Is it all of the San Joaquin Valley or what specific areas are eligible? Um, Mike, you want to take that one? Again, we're talking about very specific areas. It's not all of San Joaquin Valley. And in the decision, I think they're noted. Okay, so you can refer to the decision for the specific areas. Um, we've got a question about budgets. Is the remaining funds available on the tracker, all that's left? Or once those are depleted, is there more money in subsequent steps? Uh, so good question, and there are actually two uh, budget tracking tools online. So there's the CSI Thermal Program Budget Report, uh, and then there's the Incentive Step Tracker. So the budget report shows you overall remaining budgets, and that um, rolls up all of the uh, budgets for remaining steps into one overall view. Um, so if you go to the budget report, you'll see total remaining incentive budgets, not broken out by steps. And I do want to note that we've just noticed there's a tracking issue that's um, affecting the budget report um, that we're uh, resolving with Energy Solutions, the database administrator um, specific to the um, low-income DAC budget. Um, so the up-to-date information for the low-income DAC budget is on the second budget tracking tool, the Incentive Step Tracker, that you can get to from CSIThermalStats.org. Um, and the Incentive Step Tracker shows you what's remaining in the current step, and that'll be uh, mentioned specifically in the budget tables. Um, the low-income DAC budget numbers in the Incentive Step Tracker tool are accurate, and that is all that's remaining because there is only one step for the low-income DAC program. So those, those funds will never step down, and there are not additional funds um, behind what you see in the Incentive Step Tracker. Um, we have another question about uh, backup fuels in San Joaquin Valley DACs, and the question is just to offset um, propane, correct? Um, so what are the um, eligible backup heating fuels in uh, San Joaquin Valley? Well, it could be propane, could be wood burning, uh, could be electricity, but that, that this is for gas program. Uh, well, uh, Ron, you can correct me. I mean, they, they, there's some uh, electric backup also through your SASH program, right? Um, I, for our SASH program, I think that would be electric PV uh, right. for SASH. Uh, for the San Joaquin Valley, um, you can have natural gas or propane and wood burning. Um, those would be eligible for incentives. And okay. uh, also we've interpreted uh, the decision. Um, you don't even have to be a uh, 
say a customer of pg e you could be in a irrigation district and be on uh, either propane right. or uh, gas burning and you'd still be eligible for incentives um, i just wanted to put out a tidbit is that um, our payment system doesn't really handle um, uh, customers that are not part of pg e uh, so we're building that um, a portion of our database so that we can pay customers um, that are either um, now uh, our electric customer or our gas customer. So um, we're currently building that out um, right now, and we hope to have that feature available um, sometime in June. Uh, we'll try to get it maybe sooner than June, um, but for right now, um, it should be um, done completed in June of this year. Um, if you are an electric customer of PG&E, um, that is no problem. Um, it's just the, the only issue is if you're not an electric customer or a gas customer of PG&E. Yeah, yeah just I think... to give you guys a heads up, uh, in, the, in the first paragraph of the decision, it, it uh, outlines the, the city, community. Great. Thanks, Mike. Um, question about how do we apply to be a provider for the San Joaquin Valley DAC contractor? Uh, I, I, that's through the uh, program administrators at each utility. We're going to be putting out some RFPs later this year. So that's all to be determined. It's going to be through a pro, uh, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a process that's similar for PG&E. And right Mike, now when you, we're when you refer... the details on how they're going to be chosen and the and the, the the specifics of the RFP and so forth. And Mike, when you're referring to a program administrator for that, that, that could be a separate entity from the CSI Thermal Program Administrator, is that correct? Well, the utilities will be managing the budget, but yeah, we will be uh, either some kind of energy provider or, or third-party program administrator or program implementer, which will manage uh, ESAP and other type of uh, energy efficiency programs along with this uh, solar pilot project also. And they will decide, uh, they will determine the amount of homes, which homes, uh, you know, how many homes, and uh, they will choose a solar contractor. They will determine how to choose a solar contractor, one or multiple. Okay, so I think the message there is keep an eye out for how that proceeds with choosing a, an administrator or implementer, and then how that RFP process is going to go if you're interested in being one of those um, contractors for the San Joaquin Valley DAC pilot. I believe. Um, go ahead, Ron. Oh, uh, I believe we need to have one by uh, mid this year. Um, it needs to be. We need to have um, somebody chosen by mid this year. So. Um. Yeah, I mean, th there's the decision itself. I think has if one reads through it has some specific timelines and guidelines to uh, and specific budgets. Uh, that are noted that need to follow uh, both utilities with this program. So that's pretty much laid out, and that's, th th those are the guidelines and the time frames we're going to be following. On the CSI Thermal, uh, that was more of a general uh, decision. So we came up with a budget, the number of home, approximate number of homes, and we had to modify the program to uh, match this pilot uh, program requirement. Okay. Um, next question, uh, again, about eligible communities for the San Joaquin Valley DAC. Um, have specific DAC cities or regions been identified by the PAs, or can San Joaquin Valley DAC installs take place in any CalEnvirus screen DAC within the San Joaquin Valley defined broadly? Um, and I think, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you've already um, answered this question in that the specific um, cities or areas are mentioned in the decision. Yeah, I mean, and it's... it's Give me a second. There's Allensworth, Alpaw, Cantua, Creek, Tucor, Fair, Fairmead, Lennar, Lagrand, Lavina, Seville, California City, and West Goshen. It's right now in the first paragraph of the uh, of the decision. So those communities are very specific. They're laid out right there. Okay, and we'll make a note to include a link to this decision when we send out um, a follow-up email with a uh, link to the slides. Um, this should be coming out around next week. We're going to clean up the recording, answer any questions that we can't answer today, 
and then we'll include a link to that decision so people can easily reference it. All right. Okay, next question. Um, 4.6 of the 18 million is dedicated to the pilot program. So this would be for PG&E. Um, is the program still will the program still be available as before for the remaining 14 million? Ron, you want to take that? Uh, sorry, what was the first part of the question? Part of the question. So it's the 4.6 of the 18 million is dedicated to the pilot program. Is the program or will the program still be available as before for the remaining 14 million? Oh, yes, yes. So the, we'll still be running that budget. Okay, great, straightforward. Um, next question, uh, will the program implementer be a third party like AEA, ICF, or others, um, or will it be a CSI contractor? Um, Mike, I'm not sure if you have any insight into what type of entity you'd be looking for for that administrator or implementer I, I, yet. I don't think it'll be a... I don't think it'll be a contractor. I think it'll be a third party, uh, you know, the the first part, not solar contractor. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to go into, you know, again, a program implementer, energy provider, that kind of thing that's going to manage the program for it. And that's going to be chosen through a uh, an RFP. Okay. I would, uh, I would just say, about... like, uh, sorry, ahead, uh, I would just say like this pilot um, isn't really like a public sort of thing. I would say it's more of a, um, a private um, PG&E will just be selecting somebody probably through an RFP process um, and then um, to go into homes and see what what technology best fits them. Um, not every home is going to go with thermal. Um, that's why we went with a budget of 4.6 million. Um, these homes can go DAX Sash or any other programs. Um, they're going to be basically electrified to get them off um, off propane. Um, and so, what I think maybe pg &E will be doing is just maybe having maybe one installer or maybe um, installers um, near these uh, pilot areas. I believe we have around eight. So we could either go with one um, installer maybe or you know, local installers. Okay, thanks, Ron. Um, next question, we just have a comment to please send the list of communities. Um, like I said, we'll be sending that out, or a link to the decision um, where you can find that list of communities in the exact language from CPUC. Um, question here, uh, unrelated to uh, the topics we covered today, but a question about um, application fees. Um, so, for projects that require a uh, $1,250 application fee, um, why is that held until the rebate is paid? Why can't it be returned when the project passes city inspection? Um, I don't think we've ever encountered this question before, but um, it's just sort of the standard procedure that we follow. We hold the um, application fee until the um, project has been fully approved and paid out. Um, if this is posing serious problems to you, I'd encourage you to um, connect with us offline and we can discuss um, potential remedies if, if, if this is a serious issue that you're dealing with um, and we can revisit um, the thinking behind why um, we wait until the incentive has been approved and paid to refund the application fee. So please uh, connect with us. We'll have our contact information at the end of the, of the slideshow. So a couple more questions about the communities in the pilot program. I think, where do they list them? I think we've already covered that. It's in the decision. If, when we send that link to the decision, it's still unclear, connect with us and we can help help you figure out exactly um, what communities uh, are included. Um, and uh, another follow-up question, uh, where we keep referencing the decision, what decision are we referring to? Um, Mike, do you know the, the decision number off the top of your head? Was that in right. the earlier slide? Yeah, it's decision 18-12-015. Uh, yeah, so it's there on the top line of the slide that's currently showing, D18-12-015. Um, if you wanted to go to CPUC's website, they make those all available. Um, so if you didn't want to wait for the 
Follow BMO to come out next week. You can go ahead and reference that decision now. Uh, next question. Um, how will the single contractor slash manager be selected? I think we've already covered that in a fair amount of detail. We, we may not have all the details on that process yet, but once that uh, administrator implementer has been selected, they'll, they'll run an RFP process that will um, detail selection criteria for uh, the contractor for the DAC pilot. Mike, is that correct? Anything you want to add there? No. Okay. Um, another question about elaborating on the specific areas. Um, again, I think Mike listed off the names of the communities in the decision. Uh, I'm not sure we have um, much else to add there right now, but if after reviewing the decision and after we send this, send this out next week, if you still have questions, please connect with us. Um, what is the latest that a new contractor can be approved to projects under CSI Thermal? Um, so to be approved for projects under CSI Thermal, you have to become an eligible contractor. Um, to become an eligible contractor, you have to complete one of our free uh, contractor workshops. Um, SoCal Gas and CSE offer these workshops in person uh, approximately quarterly. Um, you can check our events pages to see when the next uh, contractor workshops will be. Um, pg and &E also offers an online on-demand um, CSI Thermal Contractor workshop that can be completed um, at your leisure. So once you complete that, you get a registration, code, registration key for uh, the CSI Thermal website, create your profile, and you can then begin submitting projects um, immediately once your profile is created. So as long as you complete that workshop, uh, activate your account on CSIThermal.com, um, then you can submit projects uh, up to the um, final day that we're, submit that we're accepting new submissions, which currently, to reiterate, is December 31st of this year. Um, but under the timeline that we are going to propose to CPUC and which will be pending approval would be July 31st of 2020. Um, next question, I think this is referring to the San Joaquin Valley DAC pilot. Um, was the intention of this program to offset propane specifically? Or is it other fuels as well? Can can you guys speak to that, Ron or Mike? Uh, yeah, I think it was just ma mainly to uh, get these homeowners off propane, uh, which can be quite costly. Um, that's how I, I pretty much read the decision is to try to electrify um, these households. Okay, thanks, Ron. Um, another more detailed question about the exact communities. Um, how are the borders of the San Joaquin Valley communities defined? Um, I understand there's a, a list of communities, but is it everyone within those city limits or zip code, et cetera? Um, will there be a map released? I don't know. All we know is those specific communities. Uh, some are Overlay with uh, a, a couple other utilities. We have some gas customers where PG&E provides electricity and also with Edison. So there's a little bit of uh, crossover there, but those are the designated cities. I don't know. I haven't seen any zip codes or anything to that extent. Okay. Um, next question about remaining funds in the sunset period. Um, how will the program inform installers as funds available uh, about funds available as we approach the sunset? Um, or the end of available funds. Um, so as far as I know, we don't have a system in place uh, other than the online budget report and step tracker, which is meant to be um, your reference for uh, remaining funds. Um, so pg and &E, SoCal Gas, I don't know if you've um, instituted anything in the past, whereas funds have in a, in a certain step or program budget have um, been close to exhausted? Have you proactively alerted contractors about it, or have we just relied on the step tracker and budget report? Uh, so, if a budget is coming coming close to exhaustion, um, I mean we could put it on the CSI thermal website um, just as a you know as a heads up uh, to contractors, let them know that you know the budget is running out, um, and we'll be going to the next step soon. Yeah. And I think that was the intent of having those step tracker, the step tracker tool and the budget report tool um, available online was so that there was 
uh, visibility into the remaining budgets that you know you could check at any time rather than sort of relying on us to go and say oh there's you know a million left in this budget five hundred thousand left in this budget you know I think you have a better understanding of your business pipeline than we do and and you know how many projects you may be looking at and if there uh, will be adequate funds there um, so I would encourage you to visit the step tracker visit the, visit the budget report tool. Uh, frequently, especially as we get near to the sunset, and if you have, you know, a number of pro potential projects lined up, reach out to your program administrator. Um, make sure that there will be adequate budget. Um, those tools aren't necessarily updated in real time; they're pretty close to real time. There's sometimes a a, a bit of a lag between um, the CSI thermal database and updating those tables. Um, so you can reach out to us, and um, we can check on the most up-to-date numbers. So this question is about um, one particular contractor um, has many more uh, installs specific to the commercial pools program than other contractors. Is there a consideration of um, putting a contractor cap? We've not uh, considered putting a contractor cap, um, specifically not for the commercial pools program. Uh, Mike, Ron, do you have any comments on, on thoughts about putting a contractor cap in place? No, I haven't. Hasn't come up. Uh, I mean, it hasn't come up. Um, I mean, it's, I think it would be probably doubtful at this point, maybe. Um, I just don't really see. I mean, the PAs could probably take a little more look into this, maybe later this year um, and see. Um, but I think for right now, probably now. Yeah, I think it's a good point for us to follow up between the PAs on. We'll take a look at um, how funds are being split out between different contractors in our territories and programs. Um, and see if we think a uh, uh, contractor cap is warranted. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. We've got a comment here that looks like some language from the decision. Uh, I think these are the same communities that Mike had re read out earlier. Um, another question, San Joaquin Valley DAC pilot. So this program, program is not live now, um, specific to the San Joaquin Valley DAC pilot. That is correct. That that portion is, is not yet live, but the rest of the CSI thermal program is still live and functioning and accepting applications. Um, so just specific to the San Joaquin Valley DAC pilot that we spoke about today, no, that is not yet live. Uh, next question about um, discussions, any discussions uh, related to keeping the program or a program related add-on to keep solar thermal going in California. You know, the CALS is having some discussions. Are we involved? Um, so to answer for CSE's part, um, we've not been involved in discussions of uh, extending the program further. Um, we are focused on doing the best job we can administering the program through the current timeline that's authorized by legislation. Um, you know, if there are other entities who want to get involved in um, trying to extend the program, that's up to them. But uh, SoCal Gas, pg &E, I don't know if you have any comment on um, efforts to either extend the program or uh, have a, a similar solar thermal program. Uh, extended, we're talking about beyond 2020? Yeah, I'd say beyond uh, current legislation. Uh, that's going to have to be uh, through uh, the legislation. Yeah. It's not up to SoCal Gas. That's a uh, that's a legislative decision if they want to extend the program to provide additional funds. Uh, some of that, a lot of that's going to be based on the results of the cost effectiveness study that we're doing, and that's due to be completed uh, December of, uh, of this year. So de depending on the results of that and depending on the, on the legislation and the governor's office, we'll decide uh, at that point uh, whether we can, uh, you know, work with the legislation to provide additional funds or extend the program. Next question in the DAC pilot projects program: Are pilots providing replacement of propane appliances with solar thermal allowed? Solar thermal is just for water heating; it doesn't cover appliances. So there, are, the, part of the program is to. Uh, 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 switch over the appliances, because if we're going to be running gas line, I don't know about uh, uh, what PG&E or Edison are going to be doing, but for SoCal Gas, if we're going to be running a gas line there for a gas water heater, then uh, most likely uh, there'll be other uh, low-income uh, 
funds available to uh, change out the appliances, water heater, stove, so forth. Um, next question, uh, outside of disadvantaged communities, are there rebates not restricted to the disadvantaged communities for propane customers? So that would be customers currently using propane to heat their water. Um, I can handle that one. The answer to that is um, no, not anymore. Um, previously, prior to 2016, uh, when we had an electric and propane displacing portion of the program, there were rebates available for customers using propane. Um, when that portion of the CSI thermal program closed um, in 2016, then we ceased to have rebates for propane customers. Um, 8797 then opened that back up specifically for um, San Joaquin Valley uh, disadvantaged communities using um, propane or wood burning for um, water heating. Um, so it is restricted at this point to the San Joaquin Valley DAC communities. Um, question about uh, SoCal gas territory. Um, with the funds in SoCal gas being almost exhausted, can single family projects uh, be done with a reservation system? No. No, not at no. this time. We're only doing it for the San Joaquin Valley pilot project because uh, just looking at the timeline from, that, from when that's going to be implemented, uh, they're going to need additional time to install it, and we don't want we want to make sure that when that gets going, there's going to be funds available. But for the general single family, uh, no, we're not. We don't anticipate uh, any uh, reservation. Right. So as those one-step programs wind down. As the incentive dollars get spent, you will want to keep a close look on the uh, close eye on the incentive step tracker. Um, it'll show you the amount of projects under review that reflects uh, projects that have been submitted and are being reviewed by the PA. So you can get a sense of how much is in the queue and if um, there will still be funds available um, when you submit uh, an application. Um, comment here about San Joaquin Valley. DAC pilots, uh, it seems as if it's uh, sort of a closed type of program and the end users are selected based on energy needs of the property. Would that be a fair assessment, uh, Mike and Ron? I'm sorry, what was that again, the question? Uh, it's sort of a comment. Um, it seems as if the San Joaquin program is a closed type and the end users are selected based on energy needs of the property. No, it's not just energy needs. It, it depends on the uh, you know, the, the the home itself, not just energy needs. If the home is not, uh, you know, the, can, cannot handle a uh, solar collector on the roof, you know, that home will not uh, be eligible. So, you know, there's other factors, not just energy needs. I mean, I, I would say for PG&E, it's probably both. Um, I mean, if they're not eligible for thermal, they might be eligible for something else. Um, some homes will be electrified. Um, and they will be off of propane, so they wouldn't be um, eligible for thermal. Um, I mean, some homes will be eligible for thermal, so um, trying to get these homes uh, less on on propane, which is which is quite expensive. It's a little bit of both. Right. Question about um, any chance of extending the communities, um, for example, including county areas of Madera, Fresno County. Um, this is in the decision. That's not going to happen. You know, we do um, have funds from AB 797. There are funds available in the uh, low-income DAC program for propane customers. Okay. Um, we've got a comment here, um, and this is from a uh, member of Energy Division, CPUC, who's uh, on the webinar as well. I think this is referencing back to earlier questions about the specific boundaries, and he says he can look into uh, the specific boundaries of the communities. Um, so we'll connect um, we'll connect with him after the webinar and see if there's anything he can provide to, to help um, elucidate the uh, exact boundaries of those communities. Um, next question about uh, program processes. Um, when does the rebate get paid, and can the installer accept it as payment? Um, this is a question maybe more generally about the program. Uh, the rebates get paid um, once the system's installed and permitted and has been inspected by CSI Thermal Program Inspector if inspection is required. 
um, and you can have the installer um, accept the payment of the rebate or you can have the payment go to the host customer. Um, next comment uh, on, on program design. Um, says uh, spending resources for the program by an individual contractor is not practical as the program will run through an independent third party manager where end users will be found and selected. Um, sounds like a, a comment on program design, so we'll pass that along um, and see if that can be incorporated into program design. Um, we got a few more questions here in the queue. We are coming up to about 10 minutes remaining, so I'm going to just advance to the last slide here. And this will be in the slides that we distribute in the webinar recording, uh, but this is our contact information, so if anyone is going to um, drop off the call at this point, um, we do encourage you to follow up with us directly if you have any questions. Um, we've got the contacts up there for all the program administrators. Um, we did keep SoCal Edison's contact up there, though, like I mentioned, the electric propane portion of the program uh, has been closed for a while, so they're no longer actively issuing any rebates. Um, but we do have SoCal Gas, CSC, and um, PG&E program contacts up there. Um, so we'll continue working through the rest of the um, comments and questions here until we run out of time. Um, is the gas company considering rebates for solar water heaters like they have for conventional and tankless water heaters after the CSI program ends? I think the thinking there would be through the energy efficiency portfolio. Um, I'm sure they're looking gas. at it. It can be part of that program, but that's that's our, outside of my purview. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a potential for having solar uh, systems, uh, some kind of in, you know incentive through the ESAP program or some other energy efficiency program, but that's down the road. Okay. All right. Um, and that brings us to the end of our questions. So um, what we'll do is, like I said, we're going to clean up this recording. Um, we'll distribute it uh, sometime next week, and we'll include a little bit more information on the San Joaquin Valley DAC pilot uh, communities. Um, since we've got a lot of questions about that, um, we'll see if CPUC can help us provide some clarity on the exact um, borders of the communities. We'll provide a link to that CPUC decision so you can review it for yourself. Um, and as always, if you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to reach out directly to uh, your program administrator through the contact information provided um, on the slide that's showing right now. So I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to join us this morning, and um, we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks.